I'm Mary. And I'm Isis. And we're the homegirls. And typically we would be talking to you after a video, but we yep. realized that today's topic, sprinkler systems, really did not have any funny or interesting videos on YouTube. Yeah, I feel like it's just like very niche, so. Yeah, I mean, and when you look it up, it's all a bunch of like how to install it. Yeah, there's nothing like... Because usually we do have like like the the kind of comical the doll one we had last time with the yeah. fireplaces, the like, crazy guy yeah. with the eaves, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, who wrote time. his video all in caps. Yeah, <laughs> someone should check on him. I know I he spoke he's in a... caps as well. I, okay. <laughs> I did see a video that was like people getting hit by my sprinkler system, but how do you translate that into a yeah podcast? yeah for sure? So, it's just, no yeah. No video today, first time ever. Yeah, first time ever, no video, just uh, just us. <laughs> yes, just us. So obviously we're talking about sprinkler systems today, also known as irrigation systems. Yes. I also wanna add, we're both reading off scripts today, so it yes. might be a little clunky on my side, because yeah. usually I have a computer. Um, we'll be okay, but it's though. been a day. It's been a day, it's, it's, been, been, a, it's been a month. <laughs> been going through it, so. Um, all right, so sprinkler systems are also known as irrigation systems. A big thing to know is that we colloquially call long watering systems sprinkler systems, but they're really irrigation systems. Do you know what a sprinkler system actually is? Is that like um, when there's a fire? Yeah, a fire, yeah. So, yeah, fire yeah, suppression when I, system. When I was doing research, yes. that kept coming up. I was like, this is not what I'm looking for. I know. It's so funny. We call it sprinkler systems, but that, like, when you Google it, that's not. Yeah, that's not what you're going to find. Yeah. You're going to find the little sprinklers that are like inside your house or yeah you like know. inside a building yeah inside buildings you have to specifically google lawn irrigation mm -hmm. sprinkler system or lawn irrigation system yeah but we're gonna call it sprinkler system yes that's, that's what, what we're we, gonna call it that's what, we that's call what we're it. used to that's yeah used exactly to. Um, irrigation systems or sprinkler systems refer to a watering system for lawns or agriculture uh oh see i said it backwards already let me try again Irrigation systems refer to a watering system for lawn or agriculture. Sprinkler systems refer to emergency fire suppression. Yes. So we have gotten, I feel like we're very clear on that. Yeah, for but sure. We're still going to call them sprinkler systems. Yeah, we're still going to call yeah. them sprinkler systems. But just so y'all know the difference. Yes. <laughs> uh, no one really makes uh, that differentiation, though. I don't think anyone's going to get too No, yeah. I think people will know exactly yeah. what we're talking about. Yes. The so. For those of you in the back not paying attention, we're not talking about fire suppression today. Yeah, we're talking about the lawn and the I'm water. all discombobulated because we don't have the video. I know. That's really what this yeah, comes the, down to. Usually the video like flows us into the topic, know. you know? <laughs> now but... we're just like, uh, 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 awkward. Uh, so sprinkler systems actually date back thousands of years before the common era. Did you know that? No, Before Greeks and Romans. Oh, wow. That's a long time. As long as there have been farms, there have been irrigation systems. It makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. The sprinkler system used in the modern residential home is less of a necessity and more of a way to keep that sweet, sweet green lawn. Yeah, for sure. Like, it's definitely not needed. No. But if you want to keep your plants alive and Which your grass Which you really shouldn't nice. be doing because, you know, climate change. Yeah, that's true. Very true. We should all rock our front lawns like they do in California. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. Where So my friend lived in San Diego and um, they're, all of their lawns are like rocks and Oh, so they don't succulents. have like grass. Yeah, because they have such a water shortage yeah, in California. Yeah, that's very true, yeah. We actually, that is the most eco-friendly type of wow. lawn. Wow. Yeah. It's also the best for drainage. We you know, should do that because, you know, it's not easy keeping up with the lawns and making them look nice. Right? <laughs> so when our sprinkler bill, our water bill was like over $200 and it was because we had a leak in our sprinkler system. Oh, no. Yeah. That's horrible. I know. <laughs> um, but anyway, this that's what we use them for now. Although, obviously, farmers still use farm irrigation systems. No, yeah. But in the modern, most modern of us, most modern of us. Most modern of us. Yes. Uh, we are, we're using it for our, our grass. Yes, for the grass and the plants. Yes. I want to say where I grew up in Virginia, we didn't have sprinkler systems. That was like a rich person thing. Oh, really? Yeah. So my stepdad would be out there with his sprinkler, you know, the sprinkler that goes back and forth. Yeah, the one you put on the hose. Yes. <laughs> He'd be moving it and then like light a cigarette and then smoke and then like move it again and oh light another cigarette. Oh my God. Yeah. That sounds very he tedious. He had a system. That's cool though. He had a system. He had a method. He yeah, had a method. he had a system. Um, so I was surprised when I moved to Texas that sprinkler systems are like a normal thing mm -hmm. here. No, yeah, for I sure. I didn't realize that. I mean, it makes sense because of the weather yeah. situation. <laughs> Although it might flood today. 
Yeah, <laughs> there's a flood warning today. In your Texas disaster bingo, we've had a wildfire and a flood in like the last five days. Yeah, yeah. We're not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, let's go on the journey of the sprinkler system from ancient farming technique to climate destroying nightmare. Let's go. I, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, isn't that great? That was yeah. a good one. Um, so basically, as I mentioned, actual sp- watering your lawn has been around forever or watering plants. Um, Egypt claims to have the oldest dam that was used for irrigation. It was 40 feet high and 350 feet long erected more than 5,000 years ago. Jesus. I know. So that's really where we're setting the date is 5,000 years before the common era. That's a very long time. Very (laughs) long time. That's really, um, I think the pyramids were 3,000 before the common era. So that's even before the pyramids. Even before that. Jesus Yeah. I have to Google that, which I can't because I don't have a computer. That's true. Usually we do. Yeah. Usually we can Google these things. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But off the top of my head, I think that is older than the pyramids. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, in Assyria, about 2000 BC, um, there was a canal that was constructed specifically for the purpose of growing crops as an irrigation mm-hmm. canal. And that canal is actually still used today. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. And I would Google where is Assyria, but I don't have my computer. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those days. Uh. It's one of those days. <laughs> it's one of those days. Um, so in China, about 4,000 years ago, uh, you have quite a few big uh, irrigation things happening. King Yu of the Sei Dynasty, I'm probably saying this wrong, it's spelled H S I A. So would that be Sia or Sei? Because I think the H maybe, is silent. Maybe Sia? I don't know. Uh, anyway, this guy, King Yu, was actually elected king because of his outstanding work in water control. Wow. Yeah. I mean, water was actually, irrigation systems were actually crowning people in China. Right? Yeah. Uh, the two, it paid off. <laughs> it did pay off, yeah. Very boring version of Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, the Tukang Dam, built by Mr. Li during the Qin Dynasty, about 200 BCE, continues to irrigate over 500,000 acres of rice. So that is wow. still in use. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. Like, cause that's such a long time ago. So like the fact that they're still using it. Like, I know. Mr. Lee. Good job. Mr. Yeah. Lee. That's like, that's an accomplishment yeah. for sure. <laughs> the Grand Canal, which is still used for navigation irrigation in China is about 700 miles long. And that was built bef- between Jesus. 586 and 618 common error. So that was... 700 miles yes. oh my god no and that was built you know like yeah over a period of over time, a period of time sure. no, i mean 700 miles so, is long <laughs> yeah 700 miles is very long whole generations went through this mm-hmm. um but i mean it's still around still being wow used. that's cool i know so in asia minor in the euphrates and tigris river you know why euphrates and tigris is famous why isn't that the cradle of civilization that's where we like consider civilization first started. I think so. I think so. We could look it up, but yeah. Um, yeah, we're down bad. <laughs> right. uh, so basically, uh, they were doing archaeology in the cradle of civilization and the remains of a large canal, 400 feet wide, 30 to 50 feet deep and 250 miles long uh, was discovered. So uh, hypothetically, even though Egyptians take credit as the first like they got proof and everything there could have been one no over, yeah i'm sure over. there was honestly because like obviously back then nobody was documenting anything yeah <laughs> so or if they were it's been lost to it's been lost time. through time it all burned down in the alexandria library fire yeah that's so that's actually like mind-blowing to think about like there's stuff we probably don't even know that happened like <laughs> all lost mm-hmm. because of the romans Thank you, yeah. Romans. <laughs> uh, also, there have been archaeological evidence of irrigation, ancient irrigation, and um, like crop uh, sprinkler systems in Ceylon in India. Ooh. Yeah. We really don't say Ceylon anymore. That's actually, I believe, a specific region of India. Oh. Okay. But it was a British colonial term. Okay. So it was, it's like part of India, part of pretty India, much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but how can we know? We don't have a computer. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm sorry. It's okay. Sorry. It's okay. I'm sorry. It happens. <laughs> uh, so let's jump to the conquistadors. They were jerks. They were bastards. Have you ever heard of the podcast Behind the Bastards? Mm-mm. You should listen to it. It's really good. I'm going to do a plug for Behind the Bastards right okay, now. Okay, cool. Uh, but he he actually doesn't talk about the conquistadors, but he does like 
historical bastards mm -hmm. and um he does like two or three part series on Ooh, them. that sounds interesting i know he just finished up one about czar nicholas um of russia mm -hmm. you know the the guy that got pew pew yeah acid poured on him dumped in a pit oh my oh stabbed okay. yeah that guy <laughs> brutal <laughs> yeah pretty brutal anyway uh that was a digression but the spaniards who the conquistadors were bastards yeah I mean, they're not good guys right um they brought knowledge of irrigation from the mediterranean so obviously the spaniard uh, Spaniards were colonized by the Greek, the mm -hmm. Romans, not mm -hmm. the Greeks, sorry. Uh, so they had aqueducts and knowledge of irrigation. They actually brought that over to Mexico and Peru. And if you go to San Antonio today, you can still see like the original irrigation system. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't it, know that. It was connecting all the, um, you know, the churches, what are they? Cause the missions. Oh, okay, okay. It would connect all the missions. There was an irrigation system that actually connected all the missions. Around oh, San that's Antonio. pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. San Antonio too. That's pretty close. Um, the Alamo was included in that, by the way. Oh. Although in the modern time, they've kind of like, they don't use it anymore, yeah. right? It's all just, they still have it standing, but it doesn't go all the way to the Alamo anymore. That's so. pretty cool. Wow. In the United States specifically, though, it was the Mormons who had the first large scale irrigation system in the United States. The Mormons. Yes. What? In Salt Lake Valley in 1847, because remember, uh, that part of Texas was still part of Mexico. Mm -hmm. So the Mormons are actually going to take credit, even though I feel that's a little, um, fuzzy because Utah wasn't really part of the United States either. That was yeah. more of a territory. It wasn't an actual like state, state official. Yeah. It was a territory, but it, it'll be the Mormons that get the credit for the first irrigation system in the United States mm -hmm. in 1847. Interesting. Um, but none of this kind of connects us to the modern. How did we go from like big, industrial yeah because these are like big like yeah. systems it's not like because compared to the home it's like this tiny yes <laughs> yeah, we're on a very small scale yeah small, for very sure. small and the first sprinkler head for a residential line was actually patented in buffalo new york by jay lesser in 1871 oh wow yeah and uh 16 years later which would be 18 i can do this i can do this 80 seven mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i did that math in my head good job, good job. Uh, 1887 <laughs> jh smith actually patented the rotary sprinkler head which is pretty much you know um what we see yeah. today the rotary sprinkler head um so sprinklers became widely available though in 1932 and this is where you actually see sprinkler heads on farms Okay. So, well, they were available uh, in the late 19th century. It was really only very wealthy people who were using them. Okay. So it's just people who had money to yes. get them. <laughs> and even if you want to go back even farther, I mean, like uh, Versailles has a pretty, has an irrigation system to water the plants. Quite a few of those palaces did. Oh, but what about okay. the, nor what about us yeah, normies? What about the normies? What about <laughs> the normies? Um, we cannot live in a palace. <laughs> exactly. That really doesn't happen until 1932. And that's when the sprinkler system becomes cheaper it becomes, uh, has a larger spray, so mm -hmm. it makes more sense to have one. Yeah. Um, and that's also in 1932 when it becomes mainstream in farming irrigation. So have you ever seen those giant sprinkler things on wheels? Yeah. They like wheel out. That goes to about 1832. And that also helped with the Dust Bowl situation. You know, oh. you know the Dust Bowl, yeah. right? Yeah, I yes. think so, yeah. You, you, you do. I'm pretty sure I do. That yeah. was when, like, basically we over-farmed and then like dust was coming yeah, down during okay. the, it was like we had a depression and a dust bowl. Yeah. 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 I, I know what you're talking about. I mean, we think the world is ending now. I'm pretty sure it probably. They were also like, going through it back they then. They were going guys, through so. it. I think it 1920s and thirties are just maybe not a good time frame for humanity. Yeah. It's like compare that to now. Yes. We're still, we still got problems. We're still going through it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Mainstream sprinkler systems like we see today in Texas are going to start for us normies, for realsies, in the 1950s. Wow, that's and way that's the past everything. Yeah, it's because the baby boom, right? Yeah. Suddenly people are, they're expanding the suburbs. Mm -hmm. People are moving into houses. Exactly. Starting so, their families. Well, you <laughs> might have had one in 1932. It really would have been a novelty. Okay. You know? Now it's the 50s. Everybody it's has more houses. Common. Yeah. Okay. They're building houses left and right, just like they're doing today. Yeah. And they're putting these sprinkler systems in um, as part of this perfect 
suburban community. The American dream. The American dream. What is that TikTok? <laughs> World's greatest country. It's like always oh, like a dog. <laughs> now like dogs live. Oof. Uh, <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, did you watch WandaVision? Yes. Yes. I so did, whenever I see 1950s, I always think of WandaVision. Yeah. Now. Even though Me too. The <laughs> 1950s was only like one episode. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I still think it was really great. Fantastic. No, it was. So. All right. So that's the history. That was a very con, like, yeah, condensed form brief. of history. No, for sure. I mean, I'm sure it was not easy. <laughs> yes. I mean, 5,000 or more BCE is pretty... Pretty impressive. No, yeah, Pretty that impressive. it goes that far back. I didn't expect that. For yeah, sure. I didn't actually either when I was, I mean, it makes sense when you think of, well, we've always been farming, right? Yeah, no, yeah. There was a sure. time we were hunter-gatherers and eventually we became agrarian, so we would have had to figure out how to wa- water. How to water everything. And, yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense so, for sure. It makes sense, but still it's kind of mind-blowing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, and isn't Machu Picchu in um, Peru, don't they have a very advanced irrigation system? I think so. Because they I were irrigating so. on the side of the mountains. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. So it happened everywhere. It's one of those things like, why are there pyramids all over the world? Like, so everyone just came up with a pyramid individually. Same with irrigation. Everyone just kind of came up with indi- irrigation yeah, their own on method, their own. Yeah. yeah. Or was it aliens? <laughs> or was it the aliens? Or was it aliens? So. <laughs> Conspiracy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay, cool. So I'll just talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about like, what is a sprinkler system, advantages and disadvantages, and then I'll talk about like some of the different parts of the sprinkler system. There, there is a lot. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I got all of them, but I got a decent amount here. I have notes on it too. Okay, cool. I had to handwrite my notes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I don't have a computer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what is a sprinkler system? Mary kind of talked about it a little bit at the beginning, but a sprinkler system is also known as an irrigation system. It is a method of irrigation that can be used to water lawns and flowers, just like how rainfall distributes water. A sprinkler irrigation is a system that allows water distribution through a system of pipes, and the water is passed through the pipes by pumping and with the help of sprinklers the water is sprinkled into the air sprinkled there you go <laughs> uh-huh the water is then converted into small droplets like rain so you know kind of cute <laughs> there's a reason for that no yeah yeah for sure so let's talk about some advantages of a sprinkler system and then we'll talk about some disadvantages so it is affordable and easy to set up apparently you don't need to spend much um on like labor i setting it up you can do it yourself yeah like, you can actually you do can. it yourself as well um, most of the ones I've seen are professionally set up. Yeah. I think it will kind of set you back uh, compared to other things we yeah. talk about, right? Mm-hmm, for sure. Uh, I mean, you're not going to spend, like, hypothetically, you're not supposed to spend $20,000 on a sprinkler yeah, system. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> but, so it's, let's I'm just sure say. I'm sure it'll still be, a, like, it's not going to be cheap, but yeah, compared to other. Yeah, it's more affordable other, compared to other things. Yeah, compared to about. other things, for sure. Especially if you do it yourself, but I don't know if that's the best way to go about it. I've seen, like, there's videos on YouTube mm-hmm. with the DIY stuff. It's like, I mean, it, it makes sense because it's just pipes, yeah, right? It's I just feel pipes. Like you just, you just got to be handy. Like, yeah, you just got to be handy. You got to be comfortable with pipes and comfortable with digging holes in your lawn mm-hmm. and stuff like Cause that. Because you also don't want to ha- have there be a leak or yeah. anything like that. It gets then, pricey. Then it will get pricey. Um, so another advantage is frequent application of water which can be supplied to the plants and you won't have to do it yourself so that's a plus yeah we, we love saving time <laughs> yes so hypothetically um if you are watering your lawn like my stepdad with like the yeah moving the- that's actually considered more of a water waster yeah because it's like a, it's a lot of excess <laughs> it's a lot of excess so in the grand scheme of things sprinkler systems are more climate friendly than like a um, that, what is that thing what called? What is this thing? The, <laughs> you know what the, I, the thingy you use. It goes back and forth and kids run through it in the summer. Oh, yeah. The, the little... Okay. It's, yeah. Yeah. Pe- the kids yeah. use it as like a water yeah. toy. And then you tie it onto your hose. <laughs> That's what I used That's, to use it for. It, you like twist it onto your hose and then it just goes back and forth. It's always forth, really cold. Forth. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows what we're talking about. We just can't come up with the name for I know, it. I don't know what the name... I mean, it's like some kind of sprinkler up for your hose. Sprinkle, <laughs> it's like a sprinkler attachment for your hose. That's yeah, pretty much. But so, the sprinkler system is more eco-friendly than no that. it is because that definitely wastes more water um yeah. through the hose but the sprinkler system is still not eco-friendly yeah yeah for sure let's make a scale here <laughs> um but yeah so water distribution will always be equal uh the amount of water being supplied can be controlled so you'll be able to like save water depending on the necessity and the requirement of you know whatever plants you got you know um the sprinkler irrigation is suitable for setting up in all types of soil and the system can be used for other purposes as well, such as cooling during high temperatures. 
I mean, hypothetically. Hypothetically. Have you ever seen a sprinkler system that's like potable water sprinkler system? Mm -mm. So um, you might talk about this. You can adapt your septic system to drain out through your sprinkler system. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So you don't always want to be using that to cool down. Yeah. Because a lot of times it's reused water. So some Ooh. cities will do that too. Okay, so like the public sprinklers, like in public parks and mm -hmm. stuff, a lot of times that's coming out of the water treatment Plant. Oh. So it's not poop water. It was poop water, but yeah. it, hypothetically, it's not poop water anymore. You just don't want to get it on you because it could still be poop water. Okay. Understandable. Yeah. <laughs> um, same with the septic system. So a lot of times the drain field, and we yeah. have an episode on septic. Yeah, we do. We do. But I don't think we talk about it. I don't, I don't think, think we do. I don't think we do. Yeah. I don't think we do. Um, I don't think we talk about the sprinkler system in that episode. But uh, part of septic systems, the drain field, sometimes it's not a drain field. It's actually the sprinkler system. Yeah. So. All right, so those are some advantages. Now let's get to the best part, the disadvantages, <laughs> which is what we all want to know. <laughs> yeah. So apparently the cost investment required for purchasing the equipment of the sprinkler irrigation system is high. Yeah. Um, for spring water droplets evenly, there is a requirement of constant water supply. That's true. There is a chance of water getting evaporated from the sprinkler irrigation when the surrounding environment is windy and high in terms of humidity. So it's like, you know, it's not going to... It's not going to actually It do depends it. on the yeah. weather. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the rain, I mean, some sprinkler, all sprinkler systems should have rain detectors yeah, on yeah. them. They're, not yeah. all of them do. But. Yes. So if you don't, then yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's just going to it's gonna go through the wind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, there's a chance of the nozzles of the sprinklers getting clogged due to the deposit of debris and sediments from water that is used. And there is a requirement of continuous power supply for operating the sprinkler system. So that's true. Electric you do have bill. to. So you have two bills to consider there, mm -hmm. your water bill and your, water your electric. And your electric bill, both yeah. of them. So now let's talk about the parts of a sprinkler system. So the first one we talk about is the water meter. This is usually found in the ground near the street or alley. You can use it as a leak detector to get an idea of how much water your sprinkler system is actually using mm -hmm. then there's a backflow preventer many irrigation systems branch off from this point the backflow prevents contaminants like pesticides or the dog uh, poop yeah. <laughs> from flowing back through the sprinkler pipes into the drinking water supply when uh pressure changes in the pipes and usually it, it like the backflow preventer is like a green rectangular lid or something like that it's it's not it's in here in texas it's it looks like a little round lid it looks like mm -hmm. the bell they hit when the boxers start fighting oh, that's what i think okay it looks i know like. what you're talking yeah. about yeah, yeah now we have there are other types of backflow preventers that you can attach to hoses so hoses mm -hmm. have to have backflow oh, preventer okay and also you have to have them in your house too Ooh. in certain areas okay and that's texas obviously check yeah your, it might be different check your state in, but in your yeah, state, yeah. So then um, the master valve, if you have one, it will be installed after the backflow preventer and it allows water into the entire system only when it is running. It can help prevent water loss if a zone valve gets stuck open after the system runs. And it's often uh, found like it's after the backflow preventer. They're together, I guess, in the same area. And then there's zones. Your irrigation mainline a pipe comes off in the main water line and then branches into several zones that deliver water to specific areas of your yard. Each zone has a zone valve that opens to allow water to flow into lateral pipes with multiple sprinkler heads along them. Um, yeah, those are just, um, the zone valves are the mysterious round green lids in your lawn. I don't know if it's the same here, but yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll talk about zones. Okay, cool. And then hydro zones. Modern sprinkler systems are usually designed with hydro zones or areas where the plants have similar water requirements. Lawns need much more water than shrubs and like other, like the little plants and stuff. Yeah. Perennials and sunny areas need more water than shady areas. Um, sprinkler heads. Of course, we all know what the sprinkler heads are. <laughs> they deliver the water and make sure it is uniformly distributed across the entire zone. Always match the sprinkler heads in a zone as they apply water at different rates. If you don't, some plants could be drowning in water while others are still thirsty. Then uh, the controller. Your controller tells the system when and how much to water in each zone. Each zone is wired into the controller, so a quick way to tell how many zones you have is to look inside and count the little wires. And there will also be the common wire and a master valve wire if you have one. 
And then the last one is, we talked about it, the rain sensor. Yeah, the rain sensor. So rain sensors are the little plastic devices with wires installed on your roof line, fence, or another unobstructed location. After adequate rainfall, your sprinklers will skip the usual watering watering schedule. If the sensor is working properly, if not, then uh, you screw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All in-ground irrigation systems are required to have a rain sensor by city ordinance. I don't know about if that here. This, um, this article... Was specific to San Antonio. Oh, but, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. It is on the Texas Home Inspection Report. Yeah. Um, SOPs, like what they're supposed to look for. I don't think they're actually required in Houston. Okay, yeah. So, I think it depends. Depends yeah. where you live. You got to you gotta check and make sure. Yeah. But yeah. So, um, my turn? Yeah. My turn. All right. Let's talk about the sprinkler system in the residential home a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. So, you talked about some parts, but I think you're missing some no, parts. No, there's definitely a lot okay. more. <laughs> Did you talk about the water pump? Um, no, no, no. I All right. So, that's actually how you get water to your sprinkler system. So, your sprinkler system is connected to your main water, uh, whatever. Yeah, you know. supply. If you're or on a well water, it's going to be connected directly into the well, the well. Um, or water like the reservoir. City. Uh, some sprinkler systems might be connected directly to the well pump. So wells can kind of run two ways. The water can go into like a reservoir holding tank, mm -hmm. or you can get water directly from the pump. So it really depends on how your well is set up. Or if you're on the city system, it's just going to be connected to your city water. Okay. Makes um, sense. But the pump is how you're getting water into the sprinkler system specifically. Uh, did you talk about the valve box? Mm -mm. So the valve box is where kind of the brain, all the little wires are going to be oh, for okay, the sprinkler yeah. system. Okay, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I did talk about that a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I think you did. It's going to be how the sprinkler system can communicate between the uh, controller mm -hmm. and the, the heads. So okay. kind of, and of course the rain sensor. So yeah. basically it's kind of a little brain. They all, they all working together. Yeah. Uh, did you talk about the shutoff valve? No, did not. All right. Shutoff valve is how you turn off the water to the sprinkler system directly. Okay. All your water appliances have to have a shutoff valve. So your sink, your toilets, the um, shower, um, utility room, mm -hmm. a water heater, basically anything that has water is going to have its own independent shutoff valve. And you'll also have oh, a main, okay. yeah, anything so has, that has water. Every, everything has its own pretty yes. much. Okay, okay. Yeah. So the idea there is if your toilet blows up, you can just turn the water off to the toilet you without to turning lose. everything else off. Okay. Exactly. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah. That happened to me on a cruise once. My toilet blew up. <gasps> I remember that. Yes. I remember that. Yes. <laughs> I remember you guys sending me the pictures. Yes. Yeah. The toilet blew up. Yeah. I remember that. Tragic. I was, I was thinking yeah. about that the other day, actually. <laughs> thinking about how I ran out. It was like a scene from Titanic. I like the room was flooding and I ran out into the hallway and the guy, the cleaner guy just took one look at me and like you could see in his face. Like, obviously that room smelled. So like, I think the toilet had blown up before, yeah. but you could like see in his face. He was like, oh, oh shit. shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, oh, no. um, I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, <laughs> let's talk more about the sprinkler heads though. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So the rotor is what we call the modern one. And a modern sprinkler head is going to pop up out of the ground. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why we don't see them. Um, so the round oh, the, they'll be hiding. Yeah. So around the townhouse, you don't see any of their sprinkler yeah, systems. Yeah, no, I don't. Right? I don't. It's because they pop out of the ground. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> they, they'd be hiding. They can also be freestanding. So sometimes if um, you, it's a DIY situation or the ground just like it doesn't want to cooperate, they'll have freestanding ones that don't. Back so down. they, 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 they you can see them pretty much. Up. They're just yeah. there. Okay. Um, but the most popular version is the one that pops up. And no, down. I'm sure that's also, it just looks better. So. It does. It looks better. It gives a smooth look. You mm -hmm. don't have to worry about it when you're mowing the lawn. Yeah. Uh, and that goes back to the valve box, right? So the valve box is kind of controlling the little pop. Okay. Ooh. Then we have what's called an impact spray. Mm -hmm. And have you ever heard of that sprinkler system that's like, ch -ch 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the old school, really old school. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that was actually going to be invented and used back okay. in the 30s. In, in the 30s, okay. Um, a lot of golf courses still use them, you yeah, know? Yeah, I've, I've definitely like seen them. Yeah. The, and they that make that noise. noise. Yeah, they yeah, make that, that noise for sure. <laughs> So the um, interesting thing about the impact spray is the impact spray is kind of the grandpa of the modern rotor head. Mm -hmm. And both the impact spray and the rotor head mimic rainfall. So it's not just like shooting water out, right? It's kind of um, sprinkling, as you said. It's mimicking. It is shooting it's an like art. Rain. Yeah, yeah, but it's mimicking <laughs> rainfall. And that's why it did that like ch -ch 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 -ch, because yeah. it was like drip, 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 long yeah. line, you know? 
Uh, then you have the drip line. And as you mentioned, there's different water levels for lawn yeah. versus plants. And so drip line is something you're more likely to see in a bed, a plant mm. bed. And you can have mixed media sprinkler systems. So you don't have to have a sprinkler system that's all rotary. It can be like designed for your like different specific, areas, the, like, different, yeah. Zones, yeah, the right? different zones, right? Yeah, different zones. Because some zones might be in beds, some zones might just be lawn. Yeah, so, okay, that's cool. So a drip line is a more natural, and this actually is the the best type of sprinkler system to have. It is the most eco-friendly. Oh, the drip, the drip line. Yeah, as far as least water wasted. So water just drips, like naturally drips into the soil. That's nice. Much more like a um, normal or natural phenomenon. Yeah, that's actually nice. Kind of mimicking a gradual intake of water. Mm -hmm. Then you have the emitter. So emitter looks like a drip line in that it's also a long hose, but it has parts on it where the water comes out. Oh. So the drip line is like a long hose with like holes in it. Yeah. So an emitter is also a long hose, but it has a specific area where water is coming out. And usually you're using an emitter, usually you're using, yeah, usually you're using an emitter to water a specific plant. Okay. So if you have like a pot that you want to yeah. be watered, you could like put the little hose in the pot uh, okay. and the water would go like just come out in that one spot. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. Or if you have like a tree, you know, that you want to water, water specifically. Okay. That's cool. But actually when it comes to trees... I'm going to trip over myself here. The bubbler is the best for the, for tree. the trees. Yeah. Okay. And a bubbler, again, it's on a hose system and uh, water is only coming out of one spot. But so the emitter, it's kind of hard to explain because we're like talking about it. Yeah, it's easier yeah. to look at it in a picture. Sure. The emitter, when it comes out, is coming out in like streams, like mm-hmm. multiple streams, whereas a bubbler is coming out like it almost looks like a bubble because it's like blub, 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 oh, blub, blub, okay, okay. Blub. and that's really good for deep rooted trees because yeah. they need kind of like hyper focused water. The roots are deep in there. The so. roots are deep. Yeah. So those are the sprinkler heads that Ooh, you could encounter. Interesting. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, modern builds and modern sprinkler insulation, they're not going to use the the impact spray. They're going to use the rotor. Yeah. Impact spray is really the old school one. If you see an impact spray, it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that it's an old fashioned. It's older. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and if we're going to do this thread of what is most eco-friendly to least eco-friendly impact is definitely the least because it's going to have the most spraying. waste. Yeah. Yeah. Um, rotor head, as far as the spray is going to be your most. And then the drip line, of course, is, is, is the, is the most, the most. friendly one. Yeah. yeah. But you really don't want to do a drip line in a lawn. You're not going to get the water you need for the yeah. lawn. I feel like the rotor is probably definitely the best way to go. Yeah. Um, now zones, you mentioned zones, yeah. but there's two things you did not mention. If you live in a wet climate, you need less overlap of zones mm-hmm. and a dry climate needs more overlap. Yeah. So here in Houston, we actually need less overlap because of all the, the rain. Yes. <laughs> and when we say zones, we mean like literally your yard is broken up by sprinkler heads. Yeah. And then the sprinkler heads come out and they water their specific area. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like you, um, have one sprinkler head that just, no, like, yeah, it's it. Everything is like little designated uh, spots, pretty much. Exactly. So if you're in a dry climate, your heads are going to overlap their spray. Yeah. Whereas in a wetter climate, you're going to have more space. Yeah, more space between the, the, the sprinklers. Okay. Yeah. There's going to still be some overlap, but not, not as much as dramatic. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, as far as the state of Texas, home inspectors do inspect sprinkler systems. Yeah. I always say, make sure you check your I've seen state. lots of the sprinkler videos yes. for sure. We, some funny ones. Yeah. Because, you know, it's it's weird because like again, it's hard to do a podcast on sprinkler systems with the visuals because you no, show yeah. the video and all they're gonna hear is like Yeah, you're just gonna hear water spray and everywhere. Yeah. I mean it makes no sense to show a video. No, yeah. Which it, is it why we're like just, we have videos, but it's like it's all you it's hear a visual is like thing. water sounds. Yeah, it's more of a visual thing. Ambient water noises. <laughs> um so we do inspect them in Texas, the, the home inspector yeah. does. Uh, as far as who works on them, it really depends. They're actually professional sprinkler companies. In the state of Texas, you do need a license to install a sprinkler up to a certain point. So if it's like a commercial, this is how I've interpreted it. It's very, mm-hmm. it's one of those where there's like all these different gray areas and like back clauses. My understanding is, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, In the state of Texas, you need a commercial light or excuse me, a license to install sprinklers on commercial properties. If the property is under a certain amount of square footage and it's not being used for like agricultural reasons. So like, obviously, if you're a farm, you have to have a license to install a sprinkler system. 
But under square footage and not being used for agriculture, pretty much anybody can install a sprinkler so system. So if I'm like moving to a, into a house, yes. pretty much I can get anybody to come install it for yes. me. Yes, because most residential properties are way smaller than the no, requirement. No, for sure. Um, which is why kind of get a hodgepodge of people who in the state of texas who install sprinklers landscape companies yeah landscape i know companies. landscape companies do yeah. It. yeah um there's sprinkler specific companies plumbers sometimes do them because it oh. is kind of a plumbing yeah. thing the um pipes. so really when it comes to residential kind of a mixed bag yeah for you sure. don't really need a license to do it okay in the state of texas anyway um, but it's located for the home inspection in section six, which is a special section. Oh, a special. Yes. Yeah, section six is very special because it's the optional section. Okay. So yes. it's like, uh, yeah, just it's optional, optional stuff yeah. pretty much. Cause not every house is going to have a sprinkler system or. Exactly. So we see so many though, we include it in the price of the inspection, Yeah. but some inspection, some inspectors don't. Some they, it's like added it. on. Add it. Yeah. Okay. And on a note, I am looking at the trees and I just saw a tree bend like all the way down forward outside. One of the like, ones over there. That, that, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, is this house? I, yeah. This one, right? Yeah. It's starting to like, it's one of the long skinny trees. There was trees. a big gust of wind and it bent like all the way yeah, forward. Yeah. It's not, it's not going to be pretty it's tonight. It's crazy outside right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. So I want to talk about one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. And that is winterizing the sprinkler system. Winterizing? Oh, yes. like what do you do with them when it's cold? Yes. Or, okay. Yeah. So have you, I don't know if you ever see the sprinkler system on the side of the house, but it's like wrapped up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's because it's winterized. Okay. So there's a couple steps and I'm probably going to get it wrong because honestly, I can never remember how to do it correctly. Yeah. And which is probably why our sprinkler system breaks all the time. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> um, you're supposed to drain it. So how you drain it is you're going to open it at the source. So there's like an opener in the um, sprinkler mm -hmm. by the backflow preventer. You're going to open it and drain it out. You want all the water out of the line. In a commercial uh, situation, they might actually put a blower in there that like forces the water out. But you don't want to use a blower on a residential because you might damage the line. Yeah. So you want to kind of open it, drain it out, and then you're going to shut everything off. So you're going to shut down the um, the pump controller, like turn it off for the winter. Mm -hmm. You're going to shut the water access off so there's no water accidentally gets in. So you just yeah. turn off the water. And then you're going to wrap it up. And so you can use, some people use towels. We use like old t-shirts. Yeah. Um, there's all sorts oh, wow. of, I've I didn't seen know yoga that. mats, like, oh. like yoga towel, not yoga mat, yoga towels. And then if you really want to insulate it, some people like cut up pool noodles and they'll like wrap it around oh, the pipes. And that is supposed to protect it from freezing. Cause okay. if your sprinkler system freezes, it'll burst. Yeah. And you don't want, you don't want that. No. <laughs> so remember after the freeze, when like all the sprinkler systems were like just shooting water yeah. out of, um, like by the backflow yeah. preventers, that's cause they burst. I didn't know that. I didn't know you had to like prepare the sprinklers for the winter. <laughs> yeah. And here it's just, I, I mean, feel like it's iffy. But, right. Um, it froze, what, twice this year? This it really year shouldn't be yeah. freezing at all. But yeah. and none of it was as bad as the 2021, right? Yeah, Where we it, like, froze for a whole week. Yeah, that was actually horrible. <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. But, um, but the good news is, at first, the sprinkler systems didn't blow up because we didn't even have any water. Mm -hmm. But then when, like, all the water came back, they all started, like, blowing Bursting. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we i people do it we do it you see my neighbors yeah do it. i've seen them and usually in like november just because it's a good idea honestly yeah like might as well be safe about it that way you don't gotta spend more money <laughs> yeah. and you really don't need to run your sprinkler system in the winter anyway what are yeah. you watering everyone's lawn's gonna turn brown exactly like all the plants are gonna they're gonna suffer a little bit anyways yeah. they don't really need to be water it tends to be damper here well it's damp here all the time no but it tends sure. to be damp here in the winter because yeah. instead of snow we get rain yeah so like when everyone else gets rainstorms we get we I get mean, blizzards. We, we, get, get, we get more rain. We get more rain. Yeah. Um, so it's it's just a good idea to do it, even if you feel like it's too hot where no, you live. Yeah. Maybe Miami is a little bit different because it like never yeah. really gets cold there. But it's always better to be safe than sorry. Exactly. Guys. Exactly. Better to be safe than sorry. So you usually put your sprinkler system to bed in like November, and then you wake it up around March when you're going to start planting your bulbs and stuff yeah. like that. So ours has been on since february i think because mm -hmm. we've had some warm 
Yep. Mix a grab bag of warm and cold. Yeah, the weather, man. Texas, make up your mind. I know. I'm tired of uh, getting ready for the cold and then walking out into the heat and vice versa. <laughs> and also, though, I don't want it to be hot yet. Yeah, Because me I'm either. not ready for winter. I just want it to be, I call it Hawaii weather. It just needs to be like 75 yeah, and sunny. Yeah, like this past week, the weather's been actually very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, except for today when I don't know what's going yeah, on right now. Yeah, it, it, it looks like it's going to rain. It, it almost looks like a tornado, but there's not you a tornado. You never know. Because oh, sometimes they'll be like, it's going to rain today, blah, blah, blah. And then nothing happens. Yeah. And you're just like, okay. So, yeah, today was 100% chance of rain. I and think it only rains like tw- like twice. I think in the morning it was raining, but now it's kind of just like... We live in Houston Playing now. with us. <laughs> so, oh, I had my windows open when that wildfire came through. Oh, so no. I had to like use the air purifiers from the office oh, in no. my house because my whole house smelled like a campfire. Oh my God. Yeah, it was That's so crazy. Gross. It started at like 3 a.m. I was like, I think my neighbor's house is on fire. But then I went back to sleep. Like my brain woke me up and I was like, oh, someone's house is burning down. And then I went back it's to sleep. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't my house. So then at like 6, I'm like, oh my God, it really stinks. Did the whole neighborhood burned down mm-hmm. you know like it smells really really bad and then um i it was on reddit first before the news picked it up reddit reddit's it up. always they're quick about it man i know someone was like why does it smell in houston and immediately it was like wildfire 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 and i was like oh my god they're on top of it and yeah and then the like reddit an hour warriors. later the news like announced that yeah. it was a wildfire so. yeah <laughs> um anyway reddit reddit my friends on that note, is it time for um, credits? Yes, it's, it's time for credits. All right. Our music credit is Kevin McLeod of Incontech. Our source credits are the USDA, National Geographic, and an article called Small Scale Irrigation Systems by the Peace Corps. Thank you, Peace Corps. Yeah, Peace Corps. <laughs> uh, check us out on YouTube at A Action Home Inspection Group Houston, on Facebook, and on Instagram at Home Inspector underscore Texas, and on TikTok at Houston Home Inspector. Our next topic actually kind of blends in with this Ooh. is water wells. Okay, yeah. cool. And that'll yeah. be for that'll be for April. So I hopefully we'll have some sort of computer next time for sure. So for we're sure. not such a discombobulated. We'll be better mess. prepared next time. I think yeah. it was very informative still though. So. I think it was. I, I mean, the video threw us off. Yeah, because we're so used to like, okay, let's play the video. This time we're like, so uh, hey, <laughs> yeah, uh, this is awkward. <laughs> I don't know how to talk. I know. <laughs> um, Hopefully I can find a good water well video. I'm sure. I feel like it would be easier to find. Sprinkler system is just not. It's funny because YouTube is like a rabbit hole, but not when it comes to sprinkler systems. Yeah, no, it's, it definitely is a rabbit hole, but, yeah. <laughs> but not, not for sprinkler systems, yeah, not, unless not you want to learn how to install one yourself. Yeah, that's, yeah, it'll be good for that for sure. But all right. So I'm Mary and I'm Isis and we're the home girls and we'll talk to you next time about water wells. Yes. Mm-hmm.